Why am I showing you this? Because this is the ambient temperature of the room. That the Xeon rig is in. And it's not making it any easier with one little tiny problem I'm having. Let's go see. All right, we're booting up. Now, if you recall, this is a Xeon X5660, so six cores, 12 threads, 2.8 gigahertz standard clock speed, 3.2 gigahertz uh, turbo. Well, since I talked to you last, uh, I've been doing some playing around with it. One of the things I did was I actually updated the BIOS. And one of the things I found is that there are things you have to consider when you have six cores. And that is that you have six cores worth of heat, six cores worth of voltage, six cores worth of consideration and or trouble. Now you see right now, the one thing you learn real quick about overclocking well, in the Halems, they have Xeons, or Westmere's, in this case, is that the thing you don't mess with is the multiplier. If you want to send your temp skyrocketing, go ahead and uh, play with the multiplier and try to overclock this thing. Your best bet, at least from what I found, is to just stick with the 21, which is the stock multiplier, and this is 21. And play with the B clocks. Also, though, you got to play with the voltages. Make sure that you take auto off of the voltages because a lot of boards will actually fry a West mirror by going past the 1.4 volt V core. Um, you know, it's supposed to be tops out 1.35 with a 0.5 droop, V droop, and well, you go beyond that and you're risking the processor. And that's something I don't want to do. Now, I'm not looking for record-breaking, record-setting performance here. Um, I've already run things like uh, 3D Mark Vantage and 3D Mark 06 on this and gotten some definitely better scores than I've ever seen on this rig before. So no complaints there. And right now, we're sitting at about a 3.2 gigahertz overclock, which is 2.8, which is about 400, what, 400, 400 megahertz over the stock clock. So a really minor overclock. And you can see, just sitting here in my 90 degree room, you can see what we're sitting at there on the temps with the hardware monitor. It's the CPOD's hardware monitor. Those are, well, about 10, 10, 12 degrees above the ambient, which doesn't seem so bad until you happen to do something like, oh, I don't know. Run Prime 95 for a few minutes. I'm not going to do this for a long time. I'm going to do the blend test. We're going to let that happen. And let's watch these tips for a little bit. You can see we've already come up 20C in literally seconds. And you can see my voltages per are pretty minus, are pretty uh, conservative there. You got 1.22 volts V core. Um, I've got the VDRU panel by the BIOS to be a little more stringent than the uh, Intel spec. Um, it's like a 1.9 on the IOH, but nothing is in a red zone. But these temps, when we load these cores, are a little high to me. Now, mind you, we've got a 90 degree Fahrenheit ambient temperature in the room. And according to the sensors on the front of the rig, here, you see that we got about a 91 degree intake temp, almost 92. That would be uh, 
this particular sensor right here. So it doesn't help that this room's hot, but it's kind of alarming that we're at 70C, and how long have we been doing this? Like 30 seconds? Now this processor is an upper limit of 81C, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop these tests. I don't want this thing heating up. Now I realize that's what Prime 95 is supposed to do. And you see, we set, we start settling back down, but I've already had the stop errors, the halt errors, the BSODs for like the stop 124s. And that, you know, and I've, I've really kind of dialed it back. Now, these are these processes, people have routinely gotten, got these to 4 gigahertz and above, even 4.5, you know. But I'm on air here. I'm using a Thermalright Ultra 120. You saw that when I installed this. But what I'm starting to have thoughts about is that, and knowing this is a 90-degree room and I'm making it harder on it as it is, this case... It really doesn't have much in the way of airflow here, especially from the front. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to recase this, and I think I'm going to use this old Cooler Master Sniper because it's got lots of airflow. A big old vent in the front. See right there. So that's what we're going to do next because I I really think this this particular setup is going to benefit from a lot more airflow. So I think we're going to say goodbye to the Zalman GS1000 here. All right. Here's the job ahead of us. We got to take all the stuff that's in this and put it into this. This is a Cooler Master CM Sniper. This case Originally, it was bought for an E8400 for a 775. Now, it held uh, a Core i7-860. The only reason I've chosen this case is, A, it's been sitting empty for about three or four years, and B, it's got some decent flow here. We've got uh, big fans on the front. We've got fans up top. we got fans that come in the side, fans in the back. We've got fans everywhere. Even fans in the bottom there. I can't really see anything. And this one had it too, but you see this is a much more compact case. And you see, even though we do have fans up here, some of them, I don't know how effective they really are. Of course, we got the one down the bottom. We don't really have any up front though. And what I really want is to get more airflow over this thermal right. The one issue I may have to run into is with the new case that I don't have on this is the new case has a vented side, which is a good thing, but it also has a big old fan about the same size as that one in the top there. And uh, I may have to actually remove that because I think I may have an interference here with the thermal right ultra 120 here. So we shall see. Anyway, Good kind of perspective of where we're going here. That's where we are. That's where we're going. So, hopefully we can make this uh, Xeon run a little cooler. All right, so here's some progress. So far we've got it pretty much recased. See everything's in there. 970's in there. The fans seem to be working. Still got a little cable management to do back here on this side. A little messy, but we'll clean that up. And we'll see if we get our temps down at all. And the big question we were asking was, would this side case fit on here? Yes, there is clearance, so we can keep that fan and keep exhausting these uh, hot gases out. Hot air. Anyway. Onward. All right, there she is, recased in the new sniper. Well, it's not really new. Cooler Master sniper cases are kind of old, but 
Uh, as you saw before, the temps were a little high in the old case, in the Zalman case, so we recased it in the Sniper. We've managed to get a, a stable overclock. Now, I know folks have gotten much higher overclocks out of these processors, like 4.6, 4.7. But I want a stable overclock, and I don't want to fry this processor. And remember, the whole reason we re recased this particular uh, system is because I needed more airflow. And this Cooler Master definitely provides a lot more airflow, um, which has been a benefit. Now, as far as settings, yeah, you see, there we go. Um, yeah, I've got a one. The one thing about Westmere and Halem and that is you're better off not screwing with the CPU ratio. Um, so this one has actually been left out of auto. I could have hard set it to 21, which is normally what I do, but I let the auto. So it's not going to, so maybe the turbo will kick in, but I've left a little room for it to breathe. So you see, it's got 160 uh, B clock frequency. Uh, PCIe has been left at 100. And you see what that's done is basically it's i've got the ddr3 underclocked with a u clock at 2566 but then again this ram is only rated for 1333 but you see my qpi link now the max on this processor is 6.4 but 5.7 is higher than 4.8 and it's definitely working for me and i've just nudged the voltage a bit 1.22 on the cpu 1.9 on the pll uh, 1.26 on the QPI and uh, IOH is, is uh, 1.18. So all well within specs, no yellows or reds or anything like that. Um, just enough to keep it stable at the overclock. And what this overclock gives us is uh, like a 3.36 uh, speed on the processor. I mean, hardware monitor takes a while to come up on this. We could, but um, you could also see it's idling in a 91 degree room. It's idling at 44.5 C or 112, which that's just about right. 10, 15 degrees above room temperature. That's right. That's dead on. So that's where we should be. Um, let's look at. Um, look at the actual. There you go. You see that we're at three point. Three six, so um, we're doing good. Uh, the other things we did, yeah, I upgraded again. I upgraded the bias to twelve oh two, just to allow some of those extensions. It worked and booted and was just fine with eleven oh eight on this P sixty Deluxe V two. It, it booted right into it, uh, but just to be a little more stable, I went ahead and did the twelve oh two, and this is the SLIC BIOS. So. Um, which I don't know if that had anything extra to do to help with the tables or that. The 1108 was an SLIC BIOS as well. But anyway, it's looking pretty good. I've been playing games on it. Uh, I just played some Path of Exile. Um, I've ran Prime 95 through this a few times. And. Uh, It, see, it gets through just fine. Now, Prime 95 is kind of abusive, and I really, you know, if I can get through about 10 minutes, I call it good, especially on an overclock. Now, if I do base clocks, 2.8 gigahertz, all 10 yards, this thing will run all day long with Prime 95, but I just don't like risking it. But I haven't seen anything get over about 58C on a load, and that's good with anything I've been doing. Um, I can get close to, now if I do Prime 95, yeah, I can get to about 71C, which is still 10C lower than the Max's thrusters are supposed to handle. So, you know, I'm calling it good, but, and this, you know, this is coming up pretty quick. And remember, this is coming up on a hard drive, not an SSD. I still have hard drives in here, but um, open up CPU-Z here. There we go. And there you can see, we got the... Uh, specs here and again very conservative specs so you can see basically we're running a 1333 memory um which is just fine that's all it needs because remember we've we've got triple channel memory here and we've all, and we've expanded the bandwidth of the memory which 
means we don't really what we used to do with speed we can do with bandwidth that's kind of how it works it's a it's a ratio now and we'll open the hardware monitor and you can take a look at that what it's doing at idle and our other thing's been running for a while too you can see the idle temps are pretty darn good for a 91 degree fahrenheit room so it's doing pretty well i'm pretty happy with it so so that's the uh, upgrade and recase story of the X5660 and my gaming rig. My, my secondary gaming rig is a success as far as I'm calling it. So, hey, any questions, comments, leave them below. Hey, and thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.